And Allah has indeed ordained to man to be kind to both his parents. Wow. Imagine, one is Allah, and after that he is saying, you need to be kind to both your parents, not just your mother, not just your father, but both of them. You need to be kind to them. Amazing. A question might come to a lot of people's minds. Oh, my parents are divorced, so who do I owe my allegiance to? Kindness does not stop because of a divorce. You need to be kind to both of them. Excuse your parents when one comments negatively about the other. You are a child, excuse them. Your kindness is above. Your kindness is above the negative comments of one against another. You need to know this. Sometimes the weakness of man, parents are divorced. Or parents have got a problem and the mom comes, you know, your dad is a rotten man. So you say, right, dad, why are you rotten? Come on, take it easy. There's two sides to a story. You need to know that. Your mom's weakness is she involved you as a child in her mess. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Kindness does not stop at a mere comment. You don't. You're still kind. Your dad comes, you greet him. Minimum kindness is to greet him. To embrace him. If he tells you, my son or my daughter, I need you to do this, no problem, get it done. So much so, even if they are disbelievers, the Quran tells us that you still need to be kind to them. Amazing. Disbelievers, you are kind to them. The Quran is telling us, the only time you do not obey an instruction of your parents is when they instruct you to do something which is prohibited in the law of Allah. Someone says, you know what, here's some money. I'd like you to go to the shops and buy me the latest French whiskey that you have. You say, Dad, I love you. I'll bring you water. I'll bring you drink. I'll bring you juice. But not the whiskey, Dad. Bad for your health. Whatever you want to say, say it. Because you cannot obey an instruction against the instruction of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why Allah says, even if they are instructing you to engage in shirk, you stay away from that shirk, but continue being good to them. Wow, subhanallah. Look at the wisdom, look at the advice. They are instructing you to do shirk against Allah. And Allah says, don't follow them regarding the shirk, but continue to be kind to them. So the statement of one divorced parent of yours against the other is far lighter than shirk. Imagine. So Allah is saying, if they are trying to push you into shirk, do not listen to that. But you must still be kind to them. I'd like to say, no matter what you've heard about your father or your mother, kindness is above the comments that you've heard. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. This is the advice to a Muslim. Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors, grant us a deep understanding. Everyone goes through different problems, different difficulties. The rate of divorce is very high across the globe. It has increased over the last few years. And whatever the reasons are, not our topic today. But what we do know is some people are not kind to their parents because of a separation. Why did my dad do this? Dad, you were very bad. If you loved us, you would have stayed with our mother. For example, how do you know? Maybe because he loved you, that's why he separated. To allow you a decent upbringing. Instead of an upbringing with fighting and swearing every day. Maybe. So you don't know the other side. And even if you did know, try your best. If, if, you know, if they or if one party is totally ignoring you completely, it's a different story. But you as a child is supposed to still be kind. May Allah grant us goodness. Now I see we have a lot of adults here. And mashallah, we're living in a country where perhaps a lot of us are distant from our parents in terms of physical distance. So how do I fulfill the rights of my parents? Whether they are Muslim or not, we told you that's besides the point. At this moment, we are talking of kindness to your parents. You pick the phone up tonight, call your parents. Just find out how's your mom doing, how's your dad doing. If they've passed away, say a dua for them. The hadith says a child who makes dua for the parent is offering the parent a very valuable gift. Very valuable. Because the deeds of Banu Adam are cut when they die. Besides three things. And one of these three things is the dua of a child for the parent. The dua. Basic. You just ask Allah, Ya Allah, forgive my father. Repeat the dua every day. Ya Allah, for example, 
grant him, you know, ease in his grave and what have you and so on. This is something that we are requested to do and it's something very beneficial for them. But today, if they are alive, call them. Some of us, we earn, mashallah, you know, Q-Tal changed the name to Urid. Why? It means I want, doesn't it? Uridu, it means I want. I'd like to think that's what it means. What does it mean? Correct. Some are saying, no, it means Urdu. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, the name has changed and tariffs went down and the competition has increased and you have Viber and you have Vonage Mobile and you have so many other things. I don't want to advertise everything because, you know, people might think I have a 5% cut in there. But <laughs> the reality is, use it. Come on, it's become cheap. You can sit on WhatsApp all night, but you haven't WhatsApp your own father. One might say he's not on WhatsApp. Well then phone him, come on. Subhanallah, make a phone call. Dad, how are you doing? He'll be shocked. My son, did something go wrong? Why are you phoning me? Did something go wrong? Allahu Akbar. Why? Because we are so far from our parents. Kiss your mom on the forehead. Tell her, my mom, I love you. Please pray for me. She might not be there tomorrow. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant them forgiveness. So it's very important for us not to undermine these type of acts of worship. It is an act of worship to keep comms with your parents. An act of worship. And yet we don't. Sometimes in the same city they are living, but we've never been to see them. We haven't, you know, visited and so on. Uh, we've not even made an effort to call. Today you have, uh, we call it what? These video calls. People will call a spouse, they'll call a girlfriend, astaghfirullah, they'll call anybody. Hey, can I see what you look like? Wow, you're looking good. <laughs> Try your parents, they want to see you. You are a result of Allah's qudra and Allah's power. He chose for you those particular parents as a test for you, subhanallah. And yet, you're not even ready to communicate with your own parents? Come on. So I think inshallah, we can all make an undertaking. Inshallah, those of us whose parents are alive tonight, We'll see the timing because, you know, it might be night somewhere else. They might be sleeping and say, hey, stop disturbing me. Put the phone down. So think carefully. When you can, at your earliest convenience, give them a call or visit them. Try your best. Say a word or two. And subhanallah, you set the trend and the pace. Let your children watch what you are doing. Because tomorrow they will do it with you. Let your children... Watch what you are doing. Tomorrow they will do it with you. Show them the excitement. Hey, we, today we're speaking to your granddad. MashaAllah. Come, let's talk. One day they will do the same with you. Wallahi, you will smile and you will say, Subhanallah, Allah has guided me. This is the advice of a Muslim. And we are sitting here speaking about it from Luqman. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and bless all of us.